Happy New Year's to all my YouTube viewers and subscribers. This live video right here is uh, in response to one of my viewers, Hector Martinez. He wanted me to uh, talk about training, breeding, and pedigrees. You guys that log on, if, if you kind of give me a minute to talk about everything, and then uh, after uh, I get done speaking on it, if you have any questions, then you could uh, hit it up in your comments, and I'll try to address them at that time. But, you know, let me go on with the video and uh, save your questions. For that time so Hector wanted me to talk about training so when we're training we're actually a teacher so everybody's out out there hopefully have been taught something and there's somebody that has taught you something so you know what the teacher's job is the teacher's job is to present the information and use any tools and resources that they can to help you uh, understand, to help you accomplish what it is she's trying to teach. So a trainer is nothing but a teacher. You know, uh, it takes time. It takes repetition. So to train, you have to have time and you have to repeat yourself a lot. The problem with a lot of trainers is they, they don't want to take the time. They don't want to go through the channels and the necessary steps. They want to get from A to Z. They don't want to go through uh, B, C, D, E. They don't want all that. They just want to start and get to where they want. Or you got people that say, you know, I, I want to train dog, but don't want to invest the time into getting that dog trained. So when you're training, and I'm going to make a video to, to support this and show you later, it does not take a lot of time, especially with these animals uh, that they're, they're so smart. Most of them, their retention level, they retain what we teach them. So if you can devote a few minutes a day in your training, then it would do wonders. You don't have to devote a whole hour to training unless you're training multiple dogs. But if you have one dog, just a few minutes a day, a few times a day. You know, a lot of times with my young dogs, when I'm letting them out to clean out their pen, I let them out while I'm cleaning their pen out. I let them run around and, and use the bathroom while I'm cleaning their pen out. And then I'll give a quick training session right then before I put him back in his pen. And with six dogs back in my pen, I could do a quick, a little quick training session on all of them within probably 30, 30 minutes. And that's cleaning their pens and training six dogs. So uh, also with the training, you know, <clears throat> depending on the age of your dog, the, the uh, personality of your dog, you know, if you got a dog that, that has a lot of ball drive, a lot of food drive. You use those, that's your resource, that's your tools. You use that to help lay that foundation for that dog. So, you know, there, there's a lot of trainers out there that if it wasn't for that dog with the high drive, if it wasn't for that dog with the ball drive, they really wouldn't know how to train a dog. Uh, but yet they still call themselves dog trainers. So. Some people have taken their, their dog or had a trainer to evaluate their dog, and if that dog doesn't have ball drive or food drive, a lot of times the trainer don't even want to fool with the dog because a lot of them, they don't know how to train or don't even want to take the time to train a dog with just leash and collar. And it can be done. It's, it's a different concept. There's a little bit different risk involved, especially if it's an older dog. And once you go to yanking on his neck, you know, you might get tested. 
he might show you some teeth. And if you don't know what to do, then <laughs> you just train him to show you that teeth and you'll leave him to get him to get you to leave him alone. Anything that you want to teach your dogs, you know, it's best that if you can lay that foundation as a puppy, you'll be further ahead. But then sometimes there's cases where you may have an opportunity to get an older dog and he's not trained. And a lot of people be like, oh man, well, he's too old to train. That's a bunch of BS. Whoever, uh, whoever come up with that phrase, you can't teach an old dog new tricks need to be slapped across their lips or mouth or something. I mean, that's just some BS. <laughs> you can teach an old dog uh, new tricks as well as you can a young dog. And in some cases, that older dog may catch on a little better because he's out of the puppy playing stage, you know, but you just ha have to use maybe something, some different techniques in teaching that older dog. All right, so uh, there we go. I agree with you. So there we go with the uh, training. Now, Hector also wanted me to talk about uh, breeding, and he didn't really sp specify what about breeding. So uh, I'll tell you guys about my breeding program. So I like German Shepherds. I like German Shepherds with, uh, with a lot of edge and a little fire to them. That's what I like. I like big dogs, okay? But my clients, that most of my clients, that dog with that edge and all that fire was too much dog for my clients. So I had to change my breeding program up unless I wanted to be stuck or be keeping a bunch of uh, <laughs> very powerful dogs. And that's not what I wanted. So I had to, I had to take some of that edge and fire out of my, out of the dogs that I was breeding. Uh, and, and, Put what I called a, a, I took some very hot dogs and I made them mild. Uh, so that my clients could benefit from my breeding. So, so this is what I did. So I like the size, I like large dogs. So I'm gonna try to find a, a female that's large and I'm gonna try to find me a male that's large also, I want them to have as many traits and characteristics that I want. And one of the main things is I want them to be healthy. I want them to be free of genetic issues. I want them to be free of allergies. And, and uh, so, so that's one of the main things. I like dark colored dogs. I like your blacks, black and reds deep black and tans and in a sable dog I want a real black sable dog I want a dark sable I don't like nothing I don't like the bleached out colors <clears throat> so <clears throat> in my breeding program I don't want any white dog hopefully nowhere in the pedigree but especially not in the in the first five generations I don't want no black and cream no black and silver and this again this is personally what I want in my breeding program because I want rich colored dogs. And we know anytime you mix white with anything is gonna lighten up that pigmentation. So I don't want that. I don't want a white dog nowhere in my uh, dog's pedigree. Okay, so I like your standard shepherd, which is mostly a stock coat dog. So I don't want any long haired dogs in my pedigree. And you see people They'll breed a long-haired dog with a stock coat dog, and you got some puppies that's stock, and you got some puppies that's uh, long-haired. So let's say you pick one of those stock coat puppies, and you want to do some breeding. So you don't know when when he reproduces, he has a chance of reproducing puppies with with long hair. So if you don't want long hair, then don't mix and match. I mean, I think if you want long-haired German Shepherds, breed long hairs with long hair. That way you know exactly what you're getting. Don't breed long-haired with stock coat dogs. Uh, again, this is my opinion. This is, this is my breeding program. But I'm telling everybody, breed to your purpose. 
And if it's your purpose to keep dogs, then breed to what you like. But if you're wanting to offer dogs to the public, then you got to consider what the public may like, you know? So uh, that is very important in your guidelines and in, in, in breeding your dogs. Um, once I get my dogs bred, you know, and the, and the mom is uh, whelping the puppies, you know, I look at the puppies, check them out, and then I get out my, the mom's way. I, I let her, I let her be mother. You know what I'm saying? I let her take care of the puppies. It ain't nothing I need to do to uh, assist her. Just make, give her a warm, dry place or a cool, dry place, depending on, you know, where you live or, or what the weather is. But other than that, you don't need to go in there fooling with the puppies. You don't need to help her. Just get out of her way and let her do it, you know. Uh, breed for a purpose. Don't breed your dog just because you got a German Shepherd and your neighbor got a German Shepherd, and your friends want a puppy. You know, if you if if that's the only reason, then you're probably better off not breeding. You know, because you you really if you can't produce close to the standard of the German Shepherd, then leave the breeding to people that can, and you know. <clears throat> everything has a standard and if you go back and if you look at the standard of the German Shepherd then I like to try to breed and stay close to the standard of the German Shepherd uh, like I said guys you know wait till after I get done and, and come with your comments that way I can try to address them so I'm gonna try to stay on this task where I'm at you know as far as the uh, the training breeding and pedigrees so now uh, I think I, I've touched on enough information on the breeding. I, I'll use, uh, I got a video on there where I was talking about uh, breeding for a purpose. And I had Athena, Blue, and Q. And I told you guys I like, I like bigger dogs. That's why I purchased Athena because she was a larger female. The thing that I don't like about Athena uh, it's her coloration. It's 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 faded out. She doesn't have a real solid top black line. But when I bought her, it was. But with me not knowing the dogs in her pedigree, so sometimes you know what you what you see is not what you're going to get. It's always good to be able to see the mom and dad, the grandma and the grandpa, and the great grandma and great grandpa if you could then you got a better chance of knowing what you're going to get a lot of times you just see the mama or the daddy and uh they black and tan german shepherds but the grandpa was a white dog or the grandpa was you know it, it, he's something that you wouldn't want so if the grandpa is something that you wouldn't want there's a chance that even though that puppy you purchase that puppy, which in most cases, all German Shepherd puppies from about eight to 12 weeks are very, very similar. When they're born, they're most of the time, they're gonna be black and brown or black and red or black and tan, that they're gonna all look similar. So without knowing the, the history of the dogs, you don't know what that puppy is gonna grow up into. So you hear me talking all the time, about my puppies grow up into good looking dogs. A lot of puppies, I've seen some puppies, they, they were cute little, or good looking little German Shepherd puppies, but boy, did they grow up into some ugly German Shepherd dogs. You know, uh, if you purchase one of my puppies and once they mature, I would doubt it that you would go anywhere and somebody would question if they're purebred, or that you would not end up with a good looking German Shepherd. That's just one of the things that, that I pride myself in and uh, reproducing these dogs is I want to produce good looking dogs. Not only do I want them good looking, but I want them to be able to serve my clients for the purpose that I produce my dogs for. And that is 
family companion and protection. So now let's talk about pedigrees. So when it comes to pedigrees, <clears throat> pedigrees are very important when you don't get a chance to see the, the, the parents. So you can do some research on the pedigrees and it may tell you something that's not before your eye. So if I got a dog, if, if there's a puppy that I'm looking at and the puppy's mom and dad are IPO3 dogs, the grandpa and grandma IPO3 dogs, the great grandparents IPO3 dogs, any dog can't be an IPO3 and, and, and that's some protection work at, the, at one of the highest levels, but it's still sport. But that just, all dogs can't acquire that. So that just sh tells me that I got a puppy with the genetics to reach that if I give that puppy the proper training. And sometimes even the pedigree doesn't guarantee anything, you know. So, so <clears throat> let's say if I was trying to make a basketball team. And here's a kid over here that's six foot. And that happened to be Michael Jordan's son. And there's another kid over here that's maybe six four. I don't even know who, who his dad is. But I'm looking for a basketball player. So without knowing who that guy dad is, the six four. And not never seeing his son play. And the other kid that's six foot, I've never seen him play, but his daddy's Michael Jordan. Then I'm probably going to take a chance with that kid because of his dad, which is his pedigree. So, so that's when pedigrees can be very helpful, you know. But if you buy an older dog, you know, you take that older dog, and accept him for what he is. You don't really need the pedigree, but if you was buying that older dog and you wanted him to produce a certain kind of puppy, then now you look at that pedigree and see if you see working line dogs in there or if you see pet and show quality dogs. So again, your pedigree can help, but it doesn't guarantee anything. Now, I had a person, one of my viewers, they asked me, they said, how do you get your own bloodline? So, so here's how you would develop your own bloodline. So if one of you guys purchased a dog from me, so on that paperwork, I'm the breeder, you're the owner. So now... If you take that dog that you purchased from me and you breed and you get puppies, so those puppies, you're the breeder to those puppies. So now if you want to try to develop your own bloodline, then you want to get a set of dogs and you want to keep breeding within the dogs that you have and you can attach your name to the registration or your name is gonna be attached to the pedigree and the bloodline. So if, you, so if you keep breeding within your breeding program, then you can create a bloodline that's mostly connected to you as a breeder. Um, So again, you know, I would like a dog that I like what I see. And then when I look at his pedigree, it explains why I see what I see in the puppy or in the dog. If I see a dog and I really don't like everything that I see, 
but I look at his pedigree and his pedigree is full of the type of dogs that I want, then I may take a chance with that particular dog or that puppy. So that's where the pedigrees come in and uh, help and it's very useful. So this video was about training, breeding, and pedigrees. So I think I touched on all those topics for my YouTube viewers. Now, if any of you guys, I see I got six people logged in. If any of you guys uh, got any questions, now's the time to pop up your questions. So uh, I'll have time to read it and I can address your question. If you run across this YouTube page or this video, guys, this is CT's Touch Horses forward slash dogs. Uh, look at my page and if you like it, subscribe, turn on your notifications and uh, you'll receive notifications anytime I post a video. And I, and I try to uh, correspond with my viewers uh, in a timely fashion. I'm always here to help. I don't claim to know everything, but uh, I think that I'm very knowledgeable when it comes to German Shepherds and, and I'm not gonna feed you a bunch of BS. There's a bunch of BS out there when it comes to dogs and, and, and training, uh, uh, a, a lot of it. You know, and as far as my dogs, you know, I tell you guys all the time, I don't say that my dogs is the best, but I'm far from the worst. I'm not claiming to be the best, but I'm far from the worst. There's a lot of guys out there that, that, that self-proclaim they're the best this, they have the best that. And me as a dog trainer, when I look at them, they ain't nowhere close to the best. But if they want to proclaim to be, and <laughs> if you want to see them that way, then good for you, good for him. To my viewers out there, you know, uh, guys and are you talking about any understudies? Are you taking any understudies? Uh, buddy, I'll take, you know, if there's somebody that I can help, and especially if you can help me, fair exchange ain't no robbery. You know, I tell a lot of people, you know, there's uh, there's colleges for dog training. So, and it's not really cheap, but I don't mind helping, you know, uh, if I can. But if I had to invest a lot of time, then, you know, if I did help somebody that, that, that couldn't possibly really help me, then, yeah, my time is, is worth a little something. So we, we could always work out something that would be uh, way cheaper than you going to dog training school, but it would help us both out, you know. That was a good question. I, I forgot that I didn't even see the name that answered that question, but that was a very good question. Every now and then, uh, like the guy that helps me with the training now, you know, the, my decoy, he only helps me because I asked him and I give him so much help in other areas. You know, he, he's, he grew up in my neighborhood and, and I helped him as a young kid growing up and he, he loved horses more than he loved dogs and I give him a lot of uh, help with the horses. Some of you know, I, I do train horses too. So I asked him to give back, you know, even though he don't like it, you know, help me in return for all the help that I've given him. So uh, that's what he does. And that's why I can't get a lot of consistency with my dogs because in my area right now, I, I don't have no one that could really that I could really benefit from right now as far as helping me helping me with my training. One of these days, man, if, if I get consistent with it, we'll pick a day where I can come on here and, and do a live video and, uh, you know, we can get more interaction with more of my viewers. You know, guys, when I put this YouTube page up, you know, I didn't put it up... Uh, to get rich, I didn't put it up to make money. Matter of fact, I didn't even know you got paid from this shit. You know, somebody eventually told me about it and, and still, 
I haven't set my page up to uh, to make money because that's not what I actually set it up for. I set it up to uh, market my dogs, to market my training, to showcase my dogs, my horses, my training, and to uh, give the people some trusted information. Because again, like I said, there's a lot of misguided information out there. Uh, come on now with these questions. If you got any questions, now's the time. For all my other uh, YouTube uh, subscribers, if you got some friends or family that could benefit from watching my page, uh, encourage them to, uh, to check my page out. And like I said, if they check it out and they like it, you know, go ahead and subscribe and turn on the notification buttons. I'm going to stay on here about, about another minute or so. If I don't get any questions, guys, I'm going to log out. And I wish all you people a uh, happy new year. And watch for news. Where did you get your drive to raise GSDs as well as horses? Man, good question right there. Watch for news. I was thinking about that today, man. And, and, and really, man, I, I grew up. Uh, watching Rent 1010, Long Ranger, and things like that. And I'll be emailing you, Hebrew. All right, that'll be great. Watching uh, those type of movies, I've always had a... Uh, uh, watching Nat Geo, I just loved animals and things like that. My grandmother got me my first dog when I was probably about seven. There was a few German Shepherds in the neighborhood, and she got gave me a, a, a one-eyed dog with a floppy ear named Duke. And Duke was my boy, man. <laughs> and then uh, I got hooked. I got hooked after that, you know. Um, so, so I'm gonna say it was my grandmother that 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 started me with these German Shepherds. But then, as far as my uh, my training, I mean, it's just kind of God given talent. I think, uh, you know, I'm just a teacher by nature. Uh, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. But I haven't went to any schools and I, and I didn't work up under anybody. I just kind of, uh, I knew what I wanted my dog to do. And like I said, God given talent, I, I, I was able to, to teach and, and, and a, a trainer is a teacher. So I was able to teach my dogs. And, and you know, we all got the uh, ability to be a trainer because we all have taught someone something. And if you taught them anything good and if they learned anything from you, you have what it takes to be a trainer because it's nothing but a teacher. That was a good question, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, Hebrew, you said you were going to email me... Uh, my contact information is on that card that I put uh, on that thumbnail. I always have a number on my page somewhere. And if you if you go to my page and you go to the uh, about, I think in the about section, you will find my phone number. You know, um, again, I don't mind phone calls. I don't mind text messages. I don't mind helping if I can. Swag, happy new year's. You got your glasses, man. I gotta have these glasses on, man. These 50 year old eyes, brother. Watch for news. See, it, it left me too quick, man. Oh, hey, look here, I was a slow reader in school and I'm still a slow reader, but I processed that information right. But I gotta have these glasses. Now I can see real good far away, but up close, boy, that gets a little blurry. Hey, look, guys, I'm logging out. Y'all have a happy new year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Look here, now I can't even figure out how to turn it off. Let me see what's happening. There it is. All right, I'm logging out.